Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we are going to do a throwback video pretty much. We are going to be talking about Vector Space, aka VXV. I have not talked about this asset in a very long time. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter video most likely. It's going to be around like the 10 minute mark. Um, but the reason why I want to talk to you guys about VXV is because I've been seeing a lot of comments on my videos saying, hey, talk about VXV. You haven't talked about it in you know, a very long time. Totally understand that. Totally get it. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about with Vector Space just because we haven't been seeing a lot of updates. Um, but of course, I will do my best to make sure that I give you guys some update on the price, where it's pretty much going, uh, why we have seen such a massive drop in price and all that kind of stuff. So sit back, Relax and before we fully jump on into this video, I just want to ask you guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. Also, if you guys do find any information in this video valuable, useful, whatever, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on as I do greatly appreciate that as well. So first and foremost, uh, let's actually go check out VXV real quick. So it is severely down from its like all time highs and stuff, which again, you know, when we were buying this asset, we were buying this at like 80 cents. I'm not even joking. When you guys could go back in time and watch my videos on it, we were pretty much buying this thing at 80 cents. Uh, it's actually, you know, in terms of its gains, like if we're going two years ago, it's up like almost 13,000%. We're still at about an ROI of like 12,990. It's pretty significant, but we're still fairly early in this asset uh, from an overall standpoint on where it's actually headed. We were buying back here. So just so you guys know, like this is pretty much where we were buying at. And I'm not doing this to brag or anything. I'm just telling you guys when I was talking to you guys about this, you had a ton of time to get in fairly early. Um, but it did run to about $19 almost here uh, before we had this dreaded drop in price. Now, we're waiting for this thing to bottom out. Okay, could it be bottomed out at the current level? Yeah, if we're going back to, you know, the August time frame lows, but I think that this could actually come down and possibly even test lower depending on, you know, how much Bitcoin wants to drop. We can kind of test around the $2.50 range, which wouldn't be a big surprise to me. Now, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the holder step. So we have been seeing, you know, a lot of dropping in accumulation since around November. In fact, we've lost about over 3,000 holding addresses. Now, this isn't, you know, too crazy. This isn't something that we haven't seen in the past. I'm just saying a lot of the volume and a lot of the holders are kind of out of this right now. Of course, yes, we still have 12,000 holders, which is fine. In fact, I think that that is, you know, a very good, you know, amount as well. Um, but when we're talking about vector space, I still think that it needs a lot more, you know, listings. We have been seeing some listings, but for the most part, as you guys do see here, the listings are, you know, few and none. Uh, we still have a very limited supply under almost 40. It's under 40 million now. And this is only sitting at about $126.9 million market cap. I think that this has a ton of upside potential. We have a lot of stuff coming in 2022, which I'm going to be talking to you guys about here shortly. Um, but when we're talking about vector space, I think it's one to really kind of keep on, you know, uh, keep an eye out on. Specifically because we are seeing a lot of talks like this. Now, this came out two days ago. NFT art created by AI algorithms bring new meaning to non-fungible tokens. But can artificial intelligence be trusted to produce a new genre of art? Now, I actually think that AI generative art is going to be pretty interesting. I'm not saying that, you know, all because vector spaces in the artificial intelligence game that this is going to be a market for them. I'm just saying, when we're talking about code-based, you know, generative NFTs, like for example, even like the crypto punks and stuff like that, like all these are just code-generated projects. There's actually not a lot of, you know, work being done behind the scenes. I mean, like, of course, there's a lot of stuff that you have to design and stuff. But when we're talking about, you know, AI, first off, I think AI is going to help a lot of the NFT scene. I think it's also going to help a lot of the metaverse scene if it could get positioned to do so. This is also why I think that vector space could be a huge asset for this space if it does get into the NFT space. Uh, I think that it could get very interesting. But of course, when we're talking about, you know, where vector space is really kind of positioned, it's not really their overall market. It's actually not even their niche audience. I'm just saying, this could help them greatly if they did have the, uh, have an idea around that. We do see here from Vector Space's overall website. First off, I actually have um, 
I found out that they're actually going to be revamping this entire website and stuff. So I'm actually looking forward to that. But of course, this is really kind of focused on a lot of systems in general for data and training and artificial intelligence, really kind of focusing on the future of what to expect, especially from AI. Of course, you guys could pretty much read all about this. I actually did this in my earlier video uh, talking about this when, you know, a lot of this actually came out. Um, now, Vectorspace has been doing some updates. Like, for example, if we go to the news, there's one article. Uh, so it was actually this one. Uh, it was a thematic uh, crypto basket APIs. So they released this for exchanges. Now, the, the significance of this is we actually see here, uh, it can be used for automatically generate a one-click or no-click tradable basket of cryptos or stocks related to a global event, theme, or topic in real time. Uh, you know, an example, coronavirus or GameStop. Deploy capital across a network of thematic baskets consistent of cryptos or stocks. Create graph networks and relationship networks connecting cryptos or stocks. Generate long, short, or hedged positions among baskets. Now, I know a lot of people have been talking about Vector Space is essentially going to partner with the NASDAQ and stuff like that. Like, there's been a, cr uh, a lot of crazy speculation behind VXV, which is probably expected due to, you know, a lot of people trying to shill this project. Um, I really didn't want to try to shill it too much back in the day, which I'm not saying that we're getting in early at all at this current point. I'm just saying in general, this has been doing some great overall movements in, in uh, price uh, up until recently. So... Let's actually focus on this. So uh, in, in terms of trading view, like I don't really like to use trading view as you guys do see, there's not a lot of price data. We're actually gonna do a little bit of a throwback and go to Dex tools. So Dex tools is where we were pretty much, you know, watching a lot of, you know, the volume flow into VXV, a lot of the price data of v VXV as well. Um, and it, it was just fun back then. Uh, and I'm not saying like back then is like three, five years ago. It, it was only like, you know, a little bit of time ago, but it was pretty significant. Now, we actually see here the total Ethereum being bought up here. Uh, there's not a lot of volume here. I mean, there's a there's a 29 Ethereum buy here, which is fairly large. I mean, this is significant. Um, so there's actually a whale accumulating, but I think that this is actually whale manipulation. As you do see these, you know, overall buys and sells are fairly close to each other. Could be a lot of manipulation happening with this asset in general, but uh, let's actually kind of zoom in and let's talk about this. So first off, look at the volume. Um, our volume has been garbage ever since around November. And uh, what happened back in November? Well, here you guys have it. We have this little spike here up to about $18. I'm not saying this was the last time that you could have got out of it. I'm just saying this is pretty much massive profit take followed by extreme downward struggle. Now, usually what happens, and this is kind of the same situation with Q&T, as you guys are probably all aware of by now, is this kind of gets tighter and tighter, and then it kind of just breaks. And it either breaks out in an upward or downward fashion. Like I said, if we do come down and test anything, um, I'm more so kind of dead set on about $2.50 being the main point to really kind of look at, or either as low as $1.40. Now... I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I played my 10x role. I invested into 80 cents. I sold at 80 cents. And I also sold at $16 or 80 cents. I sold at $8 and also $16. I took my 10 and 20x profit. Now, I'm not all out of my bag. I still have a little bit left. But for the most part, I took my initial investments out and I reinvested into other assets. I'm going to be fully transparent with you guys. I sold. Um, which... A lot of you probably should have, especially if you got in under at least a dollar. I mean, even if you got in under at least a dollar, you almost, you, you 20X'd it right here. Of course, if there was a lot of, you know, liquidity there for you to even take that profit. So we're waiting for the bottom stage here. Um, this is getting tighter and tighter on the downward slope, and we'll most likely see a nice impulse similar to this, where we come up and probably test about $12, maybe even 14 If we can continue that break with sustainable volume, we will see the all-time high being retested again, which will pretty much lead us into uh, price discovery, which I do have a few um, prices up here. So I actually have $30, $50, um a hundred dollars and even two hundred dollars all the way up to like 300 to 500 and like it, it, the numbers are crazy up here um but you know i did I, I i will be transparent with you guys i did have my initial investment getting taken out at 30 dollars as you guys do see there uh that's my initial 10 percent 
I actually took 20% out already, which was the 10% at $8 and another 10% at um, $16. And the reason why I did that um, was to really kind of just float other assets that I was actually kind of looking at at the time that I looked at were pretty good buy-in opportunities. So that's why I took those initial investments out. Of course, things could change drastically. I'm just saying, you know, it's not a bad thing to always play the 10% rule, which I always, or the 10x rule, which I always kind of play to a T. Now, let's talk about things that could actually help the price appreciation for, you know, the XV in 2022. Shout out to King Diego for this. Actually, this is going back to that 1230. Uh, it, it's the December 30th uh, conference call. This pretty much kind of gives you a little bit of an in-depth uh, view on what to expect. Uh, now, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm going to kind of skim through it a little bit. Uh, but we do see here for 2022, their roadmap will include Space Biosciences Grant. Due to their goal being Space Bioscience Grant, they will develop some data sets that will result into relationship networks that will help scientists and researchers uncover hidden connections uh, between proteins and disease therapies. Grants are opening up in Space Biosciences, and they anticipate taking on uh, multiple grants or applying multiple grants as they will are very qualified to do so. Uh, they qualified to do this through their scientific collaborations. They were working with national uh, national labs, including Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, uh, Brookhaven National Lab as well, the Department of Energy and the Bissell Lab, NASA, U University College London, uh, Imperial College London, the Joint uh, Genome Institute as well, uh, the Molecular Foundry, uh, Department of Energy and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, the Joint Bioenergy Institute as well, the Buck Institute. I mean, there's a ton of names here. Microsoft Azure. Uh, SpaceX. I mean, this is getting crazy. So when we're talking about all these partnerships and when we're talking about a lot of the things that they're kind of focusing on, we even see here as, as they go along, Morningstar and S&P will also be added. Their customers will be added and serve as a revenue for them. Like there's a lot of stuff to look forward to. Like I, I, I truly do believe that you should all go read this entire thread from King Diego here because it actually is huge. Uh, when we're talking about the future for vector space, I don't even think that we've seen the tip of the iceberg. That's why I still have those targets there at like $50 to $100. Like it's actually pretty crazy, but uh, those are still my targets. I still have a decent bag. I only took 20% of my bag. I still have 80% of it in uh, just to be clear, uh, clearer with you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just think that we need a lot more volume, one. Um, I also think that we need a lot more listings. I think that... From Vector Space's overall viewpoints, I think that they should be trying to get more listings and more legitimate listings too. Like I'm talking about like uh, top tier uh, exchange listings because right now they're not really doing a great job, to be honest. So with all of that in mind, uh, I hope that kind of clarifies a little bit on my stance with Vector Space. I'm still holding. I'm still very bullish on the project. They haven't really kind of did anything for me to not be bullish on it anyways. Uh, so I hope that kind of clarifies things with all of that in mind, though. I hope that you did enjoy this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are. And this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.